Hi everyone, I'm Steve and this is the College Support Network. In the past, I've worked in high schools as a college advisor and I also have experiences with financial aid, admissions, and academic advising. I'm really passionate about college access and I know applying to colleges could be really confusing and honestly pretty frustrating. That's why I'm here to provide you with the most quality and accurate information so you can make the best informed decisions about college. In this video, I'll be focusing on the private and independent colleges and universities in California. More specifically, I'll be giving you a general overview of the private schools in California, and then I'm gonna go over some things such as freshman and transfer admissions, some of the different applications that you should be aware of so you could apply to private schools, and then lastly, everyone's favorite, I'll be discussing cost and financial aid of private colleges. Before I start, please give us a thumbs up on this video and then subscribe if you haven't already. All right, let's get started. So you might be asking, what is a private school? Essentially, private schools are just schools that run independently of the state and they make and set their own policies and guidelines. More importantly, private colleges and universities are privately funded. This means they get most of their money from endowments, private donors, as well as tuition. On the other hand, public schools are funded primarily by the state and state governments. In our second video labeled Why Go to College, we talked about this misconception and myth that all private schools are for profit. However, as you should know by now if you watched that video, this isn't true at all. In fact, most of the California private schools are non-profit. This means, yes, they are privately funded from endowments, tuition, private donors. However, their main goal is to actually provide an educational experiences for all students. For-profit colleges also do provide an educational experience for their students. However, their primary goal most of the time is to actually collect funds for their shareholders as well as their owners. So that's the big difference. USC, Stanford, Pepperdine, and other schools like this are great examples of private colleges that are also non-profit. So like I said before, they are privately funded. However, their main goal is to educate the students that go to their school. I don't want to provide uh, an example or a list of for-profit colleges that are also private, but you should be able to find this very easily by searching Google. And to go off this a little bit more, if you are really interested in getting an educational experience, I really suggest looking up private schools that are non-profit just so you can know the difference. Currently in California, we have over 83 independent or private colleges and universities, and altogether they serve around 200,000 students. The first chartered private college in California was California Wesleyan College and it was founded in 1851. A fun fact about Wesleyan College was that it was actually renamed College of the Pacific in 1911 and then it was renamed again to University of the Pacific in 1961. So in the past couple of videos, you heard me mention the California Master Plan and I discussed how the California Community Colleges, the UCs, and the CSUs all fit into this plan. So you might be asking, where do the private and independent colleges fit in the California Master Plan? Well, they actually don't. When the California Master Plan was established in the mid-1900s, a lot of these private schools felt like their own mission and goals did not align with the California Master Plan and therefore they were actually considered independent. At the top of this video, I mentioned that private colleges and universities were independent and independent colleges means that they're independent of the California Master Plan and therefore that's why they are able to set their own goals and policies. So in the past couple of videos, I've been providing a COVID slash pandemic update for admissions to a lot of the systems that we've mentioned already. Like I said, the UCs, CSUs, and community colleges. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do this for private schools just because all these schools run independently of one another. So one school's policies and procedures or response to the pandemic can be vastly different from the response of another college campus. So I don't want to make any generalizations. You're going to hear what I say next a lot in this video and if you take one thing away from this entire video, please take this. Every private college and university in California runs independently of one another, like I just mentioned. That means they make their own rules, set their own guidelines, set their own policies, and set their own goals. This most likely means that they vary from the response to the pandemic, which is why it's really, really, really... Okay. And I can't stress this enough, really important for you all to do your own research, do your own due diligence and figure out what these private schools are doing, what the response is, what their new eligibility requirements are if they are having new ones, so you can make the best informed decisions about how to actually attend this school. 
So with all that being said, let's talk about freshman admissions. So I just mentioned that private colleges run independently of one another and therefore they most likely have their own eligibility requirements. Generally speaking though, a lot of these campuses do have somewhat similar eligibility requirements as well as criteria for admission. Most of these schools look for rigorous coursework in some of the main subjects that we discussed when we talked about the UC, A to G, and CSU A to G requirements. This means they look a lot at math, English, science, social studies, foreign languages, as well as the arts. Like I keep mentioning, the requirements for each of these campuses are going to be a little bit different from one another. However, pretty much all of them will want to see students go beyond what was required of them in high school. That means if your high school only required two years of math, they want to see that third extra year. If your high school required two years of science for graduation, a lot of these colleges are going to want to see that third year of science. So like always, I really recommend students to go above and beyond if they want to make their application stand out. It's also crucial for students to understand what major they're applying to and figuring out if the campus that they're applying to for the specific major asks them for any supplemental requirements. For instance, an art student may be required to submit a portfolio or a dance student may be required to submit a video or an audition video. Like I said, definitely do your own research and figure out what is required of you for your specific major and the campus you're applying to. Lastly, pre-pandemic or pre-coronavirus. Can I see coronavirus on YouTube? Anyway, pre-pandemic, most colleges required some sort of testing such as the ACT or SAT for admission to their campus. However, as of right now, summer of 2020, a lot of these colleges have waived off the requirement. But like I said and like I'll keep saying, it's really important for you to do your own research and figure out if you do need to submit an SAT or an ACT or any other test for the college that you're applying to. In general, a lot of private colleges require students to submit some sort of letter of recommendation. A lot of the times, this can just come from a counselor or a teacher that you had a close working relationship with. However, each campus is going to have their own differences in who they require the letter of recommendation from. Okay, let's talk transfer admissions now. Just like freshman admissions, each college is going to have a different requirement and criteria for transfer admissions. For students that want to transfer from a community college to a private university, there was actually just an agreement made in 2018 that helps students in this population. Under this agreement, the Association of Independent California Community Colleges, or the AICCU, and the California Community Colleges noted that college students pursuing an associate's degree for transfer can actually use this and get guaranteed admission to a private college or university. However, the important thing to note is that there is actually only 36 private universities and colleges that are in this new agreement or plan. I'll share the list here somewhere, but I'll also leave a link below for you to read the article as well as a link to the different colleges that are listed. Similar to the associate's degree for transfer program between the CSUs and the CCCs that we mentioned in the CSU video, this program actually allows students to receive 60 semester units or 90 quarter units for core courses that align with the major as long as they receive a C or better in their courses. For community college students that want to transfer to a private college that isn't listed in this agreement, or maybe right now you're a college student attending a four-year university already and you want to transfer to a four-year university that's private, I really advise you to contact the transfer office at the campus that you want to apply to just because like I said already, the requirements are going to be totally different sometimes depending on the college that you apply to. So it's important for you to get the best up-to-date and accurate information. And as we've mentioned in the past couple of videos already regarding transfer students, we really suggest you to use assist.org, which is a great website for students to figure out if the courses that they're taking right now will even transfer to the college that they're applying to. So now that you understand that most of these private colleges are going to have their own requirements and criteria, you might be asking how you should apply. That's a great question. For the most part, students have three different ways they can apply to a private college or university in California. The first way is via the Common App, the second way is via the Coalition App, and the third way is directly via the campus that they want to attend. The Common App is the most widely filled out college application and it's also the most extensively used because it has almost 800 colleges and universities in the United States as well as abroad. The great thing about the Common App is that you only ask to fill out your personal information, academic profile, and personal achievements once and then you can use the same application to submit to every single college that you're applying to. 
Obviously, each college is going to have their own, like I said, different requirements, such as letters of recommendations, essays, and things like that. But the main part of the application, which is the grades, personal achievements, and things like that, you can use that over and over again. The actual application itself is free to use and fill out. However, you will have to pay for each application you submit. So if you're applying to three different private colleges or universities, you'll have to submit three different payments. Each application itself is usually around $20 to $90. However, there are fee waivers for students that are eligible. As of right now, students could apply to up to 20 different universities and campuses at once. However, like I keep mentioning, each application to a university is going to have different requirements. The Coalition app is a relatively new application for private schools, and it was actually just started in 2015. It's actually very similar to the Common App, however, it does have a lot less schools. As of right now, it has roughly 130 campuses that you can apply to. The full name for the application is the Coalition App for Access, Affordability, and Success. And as the name suggests, the application seeks to give underserved, underrepresented, and marginalized student populations more assistance to college access. A great example of this is within the application itself, there's actually a section for students to fill out academic activity or family responsibilities. This is great because it allows students in working class families to describe commitments that they had that often prevented them from being able to attend or participate in more traditional extracurricular activities and clubs. Another example that the Coalition app proves that they are equity driven is that they actually only accept colleges and universities that can prove they could provide substantial support for low income families or underrepresented students. They do this by looking at three different things. The first is, can the school or university provide substantial financial aid support via scholarships or grants to their students? Another way is that they accept colleges and universities that have low tuition rates compared to similar schools. Lastly, they only accept schools that have extremely high graduation rates. Like the Common App, the Coalition App is free for students to fill out and use. However, every time you apply to a university, you will have to pay for each application. The majority of schools that are on the Coalition App will also be on the Common App, but for students that know for sure that they will need financial support or any other assistance based on their own specific or special needs, I would really suggest looking at the Coalition app first just because they are really known for assisting students in underserved populations. The last way for students to apply to a university is directly through the university itself. So although the Common app does have 800 universities and the Coalition app has 130, a lot of schools still are not on either application. So for these schools, you have to apply directly via the university. In general, it's usually the small private colleges that aren't on either application. So a lot of the times you'll have to visit the website itself and find the application there. So when is the deadline to submit these applications? As you should already gather by now, every single campus is going to be different. So make sure you check in with the university via the website or by contacting an admissions counselor to figure out when the deadlines are. Typically, these campuses will have multiple deadlines for you to submit your application. Sometimes they'll have a September deadline for students that are interested in getting priority for scholarships. And then they'll have a general deadline in December for all applicants. But like I said already, please make sure to contact each individual campus to confirm. Okay, now let's talk about everyone's favorite section, the money section, also known as cost and financial aid. Before I get started, I just want to address a myth or misconception that comes along with private colleges. And that is, if you go to a private school in California or anywhere for that matter, you're expected to pay a lot of money out of pocket, you're going to take out a lot of loans, or you're going to do a combination of both. In reality, private schools often offer some of the best financial aid packages across the United States and across the different systems of education that I've mentioned already. A lot of students that attend private colleges actually get a lot of financial aid and graduate with little to no debt at all. With all that being said, I want to address that not every student has the same situation. Some students will have to pay a lot of money out of pocket or they will have to take out a lot of loans to attend a private university. For students in this situation, or I guess any student for that matter, I really suggest you to create a strong college list of schools that you want to apply to and figure out the cost and affordability for all of them. I'll be creating a future video discussing how students can create a strong college list and some different things and factors to look at when they're applying to colleges. So make sure to subscribe so you can see that first. To get back on topic about cost of financial aid at private schools in California, a lot of these schools provide need-based aid. 
This means that financial aid is offered to students that need it the most based on their income or their family's income. And their eligibility in general is restricted by their financial situation. Additionally, a lot of private schools also provide private scholarships and grants as well. This is a lot different from need-based aid because merit scholarships and grants are usually provided to students that excel in certain categories such as arts, academics, athletics, and other special projects or interests. Many private universities in California and all throughout the United States will use their merit scholarships to entice outstanding students or excellent students to come to their campus. Oftentimes, students that receive merit scholarships as well as need-based financial aid will be able to attend college for free or near free. For students that aren't in this situation, I really suggest you to start looking at scholarships as well. I know this video is specifically for private schools, but I suggest any student looking to attend higher education to start looking at private and outside scholarships now so you could use it to pay for tuition or other costs that are related to your academics. If you're unsure of where to get started or even how to apply, make sure to subscribe because I will definitely be making a video in the future about how you could use scholarships to pay for a lot of the costs that are related to going to school. The Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or the FAFSA, is a great application for students to become familiar with because this is the application that you'll need to submit to get federal financial aid to go to college. This application will let you know if you're eligible for federal and state financial aid programs such as the Pell Grant, Cal Grant, federal work study, and loans. For students who live in California and want to attend California University, and are undocumented, have temporary protective status, or are U visa holders, I really recommend you to take a look at the California DREAM Act. This application allows students in these specific populations to be eligible to receive certain types of financial aid, such as private scholarships via the private university they want to apply to, state administered financial aid, university grants, and Cal Grant. In addition, this application actually allows students to pay in-state tuition as well. So for students that do not have residency or are from another state and want to apply to a California college, this is a great opportunity as well. However, please remember that you do have to fit the criteria that I mentioned earlier. Both the California DREAM Act and the FAFSA will give information to the universities that you're applying to to see if you're eligible for university grants. Lastly, I want to talk about the CSS profile, which is very specific to private schools. So if you're applying to a California Community College, a CSU, or a UC, you won't have to fill out the CSS profile. The CSS profile or the College Scholarship Service is another application that some students will have to fill out if they want to receive financial aid to a private college or university. It's important to note that not every private college is going to require students to fill out the CSS profile. However, like I mentioned already, it's really important for you to do your own research to see if you are required to fill this out to receive financial aid. Unlike the FAFSA and the DREAM Act, which is free to fill out and apply, the CSS profile actually costs $25 per application and every application that you submit after will be $16. However, it can be free for some students to use. You can actually apply for free if you receive the SAT fee waiver, your family income is lower than the specific income ceilings listed by the application or if you are an orphan child or a ward of the court under the age of 24. The CSS profile is administered by College Board, so if you have already taken the SAT, you should already have a profile or at least an account that you can use. Please remember that the CSS profile only is for institutional aid, so you won't be able to get Pell Grant, Cal Grant, or any other federal or student aid via the CSS profile. So what are the key differences between the CSS Profile and the FAFSA or the DREAM Act? Basically, the CSS Profile, like I mentioned already, is only for private schools and universities. Additionally, they will usually ask for a lot more information than the FAFSA and the DREAM Act does. For instance, the FAFSA and the DREAM Act usually only looks at your family income as well as assets. The CSS Profile looks at these two things as well. However, they actually go above and beyond and look at things such as your medical expenses, the cost of your family's health, and pretty much anything else that could affect if you're able to pay for college or not. As you may have already figured out while watching this video, the date or deadline to submit the CSS profile is going to be different for pretty much every single university you apply to. However, I really suggest looking at when the very first application is due and making sure you submit at least two weeks before then. Unlike the FAFSA and the DREAM Act that requires students to be in a specific student population such as U.S. citizens are undocumented. The CSS profile works a little bit differently and allows students from both populations to apply because as I've mentioned already, CSS profile is just for institutional aid. Okay y'all, now that you know a little bit more about the private colleges and universities in California, I have a couple questions for you. 
The first is, are you interested in going to a private college? If yes, which one and why? The second is, now that you are more familiar with the different systems of education in California, such as the UCs, CSUs, community colleges, and now private and independent schools, what are you most interested in and why? Make sure to comment down below with your answers. Okay everyone, so that's it for today. If you take anything away from this video, just please make sure to contact each individual campus to figure out what the requirements or what they'll need from you so you could be able to apply and receive financial aid. And as always, thumbs if you learned and subs if you loved. Take care y'all.